All right, so let's look at this trade from both sides. And Kenny, just tell me what this what this does for the Clippers. Now you got Kawhi, who's 32. Paul George is 33. Westbrook's going to turn 35 in November. 34-year-old James Harden. Well, he said he was he reunited with a teammate. All the teams he played, he was bound to re <laughs> reunite with everybody in the last four years. But I think this is honestly the best situation for if we're talking about James Harden individually first. It's the best situation because I, I've said throughout the summer, I think at this stage in his career, he's not a point guard anymore. He's a two guard. He, he would be better suited to spot up, come off screens instead of ISO at the top and pushing the pace. Russell Rusbrook, even at 35, we've seen in the, you know, even in these three games, he pushes the pace and he could play at a faster pace that I think Paul George and Kawhi would need to play at. So I think this is actually better suited to take him more off the ball, you know, individually. Secondly, the Clippers were going to contend for an NBA championship if they're healthy without James Harden. With him, what that gives them, I think, there's a flexibility to say if you need to sit out three games, Russell Westbrook, you need to sit out Paul George two, three a game, you need to sit out Kawhi, now you have an, another scorer that could take the advantage. So they were contending with or without him. This just makes it possibly a little easier. You know, for players of this caliber, Kawhi, PG, Russell, and James, is championship or bust. Uh, another big name guy. You know, the Clippers for the past four or five years have been very iffy. Kenny alluded to it. We don't know who's going to be there, who's not going to be there. But if this doesn't, if they don't win the championship, it doesn't work. Yeah, they may win some games. They may upset some teams. But players of these calibers, especially guys like Russell and James, they would like to have that championship under the belt. On paper, it looks good. But I don't know which, I don't know which, which Harden is going to show up. I don't know which Harden they want to show up. You want to score in Harden or you want to Harden to, you know, be a facil for facilitator. I'm hearing all these guys talking on TV about what option he's going to be, and I agree. Right now, he's the fourth option, and we've never seen a fourth option James Harden. James is the guy that puts it between his leg, controls the ball, most of the shot clock, and shoots. How are they going to use him? So I have to, I have to. Well, we all have to sit back and see how it works. But if it's, if they don't win a championship. It's a bust. Where does this put the Clippers in your power ranking in the Western Conference? I don't know the answer to that question because the, the Russell. Because your hat's too tight? Well, <laughs> because the Russell Westbrook, James Harden situation is interesting. Neither one can play without the ball. Neither one can play without the ball. Now, Kenny had a great point. They were going to be contenders because of Kawhi and Paul George. Those are the two main guys that they can stay healthy. But I don't know who's going to play point guard. I don't know who's going to play off guard. So I don't know how the backcourt is going to work. But because of Paul and Kawhi they're going, and Zubas, I love Zubas, they're going to be contenders. But it's going to be fascinating because I don't think either one of those guys can play without the ball. James has been a dribbler his entire life. And Russ has proven he struggles when he tries to play off the ball because he's not a great shooter. So it's going to be fascinating to watch. But I will say. It's James have to get off the ball. I mean, the only but that's you the saw, only I don't think he James can spot is, shoot and he can hold. He well, can I don't. Hold I don't look at James as a spot shooter. Mm -hmm. Number one, he holds the ball and makes his plays off the dribble. But I think it's a great trade for the Sixers. Number one, they got rid of the headache. They it's got addition by subtraction. Yes. Number one, they bench got better. It's time for Maxi to be the second guy. But I think the biggest beneficiary of this whole situation is going to be Tobias Harris. Tobias Harris is a good player, but you don't get four balls. You don't get four balls. Now he moves to the third spot. You can have three guys who can score, but you can't have four guys. It's just not a ball spot. And, and so, we'll see what Daryl Morey does with this, all these pieces that he accumulated in this deal. Yeah, but he's done yet. Er, Ernie, there's a reason people gave you these pieces. Like, everybody just assumed. But the draft pieces, too. I mean, you, you got yeah, the draft yeah, pieces. Draft and the biggest are, thing is the Those the draft space. picks ain't going to be no good. With the cap space, you know, yeah. I think it's $55 million. They'll be in the cap space and they next said, year. That sounds good on paper, yeah. but they, but they got to pay Maxi. They got some nice pieces. They got to pay Maxi. Yeah. So, so that, that $50 million, because Maxi going to get a big deal because he deserves it. Yep. Um, we are, by the way, uh, nearing tip-off. Uh, I can't wait there. to watch this game tonight. We are 19 minutes and 40 seconds away. Don't forget to order your game time favorites through DoorDash for tonight's doubleheader.
Charles in his head. Custodial engineer. Hey, listen, don't, don't, don't mess with people. The Golden up, Bachelor, no. no. <laughs> Not the Golden Bachelor. Oh, my goodness. The Golden Bachelor. Nothing on, nothing on Jimmy Hoffman? Oh, of course not. I'm, I'm beautiful you actually, up here. You actually wear that pretty well. I know. I look good up here, boo-boo. I want to consider it. Thanks, Bridge. I look good, boo-boo. Period. <laughs> <laughs>